What's up, peeps? It's your boy, Pooh, and today I'm going to walk you through the first episode of Dragon Ball Daima. At first, this was going to be a small video with just me saying it was good, but goddamn, I saw so many bad takes and misinformation on the episode. I feel like this needed some better treatment. Now, if you haven't seen the episode, I suggest you go and watch it before you watch this video, as I'll be clarifying things that apparently really need it. Now, firstly, I think we can all agree that the art and animation is gorgeous. The recap and the stills were beautiful, and the only thing that they got wrong in them were some of the uniform colors of Goku and the gang, as well as forgetting Tien's third eye in one panel. Now, the characters who appear to be the main antagonists of the series are also the ones with the point of view for this first episode, even more than the main Dragon Ball cast. First, we have Demon Prince Goma, who is Dabura's younger brother and the new heir apparent to the Demon Realm. And then we have his right-hand man, Degesu, who is a core person, meaning the race of beings that can become Kais, and he is the Supreme Kai's younger brother. And we also have Dr. Arinsu, who is the sister of Degesu and the Supreme Kai. However, Dr. Arinsu seems to be a slightly more mysterious antagonist, so we mostly see things through the eyes of Goma and Degesu, though the fact that Supreme Kai, Degesu, and Goma are siblings is quite strange, because all core peoples come from the same tree on the core planet, so we don't know how exactly they are siblings. That Either they're all siblings or none of them are. Like, maybe they're from the same branch or something, but it, it's hard to say. I would also be remiss not to point out that, assuming Daima is canon, then Dr. Arinsu would be the first non-filler, non-video game Lady Kai, or more accurately, core person, that we have ever seen. Although, I potentially might have to burst the bubble of you gooners out there, as Toriyama has stated that there are no male or female Kais, since they all come from fruit. So despite her design, and the fact she is sporting what some of my friends jokingly call the heavies, there might be nothing down there, just like there might be nothing down there for Supreme Kai or Degesu. However, considering King Kai canonically has a pee, pee since he talks about himself peeing, and Supreme Kai and Degesu are brothers and Dr. Arinsu is a sister, Toriyama's statement might just be retconned at this point. Hard to say. If you want more information on that, I suggest you go and watch my video on the Kais, but back to the episode. Now, the first thing we have to note about both Goma and Degesu, and this is super important, is that they are unreliable narrators, and one could even say they are extremely uninformed. And so whatever they say about the Dragon Ball world needs to be taken with a huge grain of salt. At the beginning of the episode, they see Ki Blasts and think of it as having to be magic, as if they have never heard of Ki before or seen it. That should have tipped people off immediately, but the fandom tends to be extremely literal on every single statement made. In fact, I think in my next review on Daima, I will screenshot different takes that are wrong that I see on social media and put them in the video to debunk, so watch out because you might end up on the screen. Anyway, when we first meet Goma and Degesu, they are in a chamber that really has Dragon Ball Xenoverse time warping vibes, and they're watching the entire Boo saga unfold before their eyes. They find out about Deborah's death, and then Bobbity's death, and then Majin Buu's death, and realize that the Earthlings, Saiyans, and Namekians that reside on Earth are extremely powerful and might potentially one day invade the Demon Realm. They also find out that Earth has Dragon Balls, and this is when we find out that the Demon Realm also has Dragon Balls. Now, let's discuss something that people are really raving about, which is the claim that the Namekians originated from the Demon Realm. The two instances of this theory is from Degesu seeing Dende and Piccolo and saying no wonder they can't find any more Namekians, they must have escaped to the outer world, and then when Degesu meets Dende, he says Dende's ancestors must have originated from the demon realm because he has pointy ears. Now, ignoring the fact that Degesu only knows anything from notes he has taken, and that we only know of him ever meeting one Namekian before Dende, even though both Degesu himself and Mr. Popo right behind Dende all have pointed ears, and even if Dende was one, we know Degesu did not originate from that realm, but fell to it, and Mr. Popo is never stated to be from there. So it's very strange to assume that because Namekians have pointed ears, that they must have originated in the Demon Realm. It's extremely likely that this is just a bunch of bullshit, 
but fans in Dragon Ball take everything super literally. Now, does this mean that in Daima's canon, the Namekians are not from the Demon Realm? No, but nor does it explicitly mean that they are either. Both Degesu and Goma seem to be very ill-informed, with no knowledge of the outside world beyond the Demon Realm, and this is textbook Dragon Ball fandom, taking statements from unreliable narrators and thinking it's fact immediately. And even if the Namekians were from there, I'm not updating my Namekian video because I report and explain the original manga and add some info on the original anime. However, people need to slow down and realize nothing is confirmed yet for Namekians, and the only piece of evidence that holds any weight from the super canon that goes with the potential for Namekians to be from the Demon Realm is a panel in the super manga where a Namekian states that Namekians came from another realm or dimension, but that's the only thing we have to support for this theory. Also, the fact that Dragon Ball Daima calls Namekians Namex, just like the funny dub, is super hilarious because a bunch of sub-elitists always made fun of the funny dub calling them Namex because, like, no, 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 they're, they're, they're fucking Namekians. But, like, now we got Dragon Ball Daima being like, oh, they're Namex, and people are just like, no, which is super fucking funny. But anyway. Uh, however, we do we do meet a new Namekian, or rather a very old one, named Neva, who seems to be the only Namekian who lives in the Demon Realm, and who made the Demon Realm Dragon Balls millennia ago. He is ancient, even by Namekian standards. If you remember my video on the Namekians, both Guru and the nameless Namekian that, can, that became Kami and King Piccolo were both around 500 when they died. However, Neva is thousands of years old. And we find out how when Goma tells him that if he helps, Goma will extend his life another thousand years. So apparently Goma's been the one that's keeping him alive. Neva's Dragon Balls in the Demon Realm consist of only three, and they are each guarded by powerful guardians called Tamagami. And Goma says Neva made them as well. Oddly enough, Degesu knows about Purunga, and knows how big the Dragon Balls are on Namek, or at least he knows how big they should be. Yet, seven Dragon Balls are new to him, even though there's seven Dragon Balls on Namek. Perhaps the Demon Realm Dragon Balls are large and can summon a Purunga type dragon as well, but we don't know yet. Now, it's very clear Dr. Arensu is quite intelligent, like her brothers, only far more conniving. It's her that manipulates Goma into being afraid that Goku and his friends might attack the Demon Realm, and she does this when Goma threatens to halt the funding of her research, rather than continuing funding her like Demon King Deborah did. We don't know much about what exactly her research is, but it's very kind of textbook Toriyama or Dragon Quest. And we also find out that she has traveled to Earth before Goma and Degesu, clearly being up to something. Then we finally see the gang at Trunks' ninth birthday party, and to get you guys up to speed, my best friend forever Clearin gave some info on the timeline for both Daima and Super, and I'll read. The first episode or two of Super took place not long after Boo, maybe six months. Beerus himself took place five years later though, since Videl is pregnant with Pan. No dates are given in the manga for when the Boo arc took place, but guides say it was in May. That fits in with the 22nd Budokai also being in May, which means it fits with the 25th Budokai in the Buu Saga being then as well. Future Trunk says he was born two and a half years from when he met Goku, so if both that and three years when the androids attack are literal, he was born six months before May in November, making Daima take place in November of the same year that Buu took place in May. So, right now in the Dragon Ball timeline, it's most likely that they are in November. Everyone, please thank Clearin because I am terrible at timestamps for Dragon Ball. Anyway, as I was saying, we meet the gang at Trunks' ninth birthday party, and we learn a few things. One, Goku states something that I actually stated in my Saiyan video, which was that Saiyans get a huge growth spurt around their 15th birthdays. Of course, Goku himself is likely only talking from his own singular experience, but it was nice to see something that I felt seemed correct on screen. And of course, we have the infamous retcon of a retcon when it comes to the Patara earrings and being able to get out of that fusion, since both Supreme Kai and Kabito are there and they are not fused into Kabito Kai. Originally, the Patara earrings were supposed to fuse two beings permanently, 
in the original manga. But then later in Super, that is changed to the Batara earrings only fusing people for one hour. However, supposedly it was permanent if a Supreme Kai is involved. However, in this first episode of Daima, Supreme Kai and Kabito explain that they learned that Goku and Vegeta separated when inside of Boo's body, and realized Boo gave off a certain special gas that broke the Batara fusion. And so they kindly asked Good Boo to absorb them so they could separate and come out again. It is still possible that Goku and Vegeta's hour was not up during the Boo saga, but they were still separated, so Kabito Kai thought it was worth a shot and it worked. But it did seem a retcon to me. And speaking of Boo, Krillin states, or rather, marvels, at Goku wishing Boo back as a good guy and to let him remain on Earth. When, as we all know, that is not what happened. Goku wished for Boo to be reincarnated as good, however, that Boo would become Oob. Good Boo, or Mr. Boo, was already on Earth and had become good from Hercule, or Mr. Satan, changing his evil ways, and when Fat Boo expelled all the evil out of him to make Evil Boo. So it's very strange that Krillin is acting like the backstories of both Good Boo and Oob are mixed together into one. I don't really know what to make of it. It does seem like Oob has been all but forgotten for most of Dragon Ball after the 80s, so it's very likely he got canned for Daima, but we don't know currently. Now, Goma and Degesu and Neva make it to the lookout, and Neva does something quite impressive. Now, we've seen Kami restore Shenron before, as well as Dende recreating him. However, we have never seen someone summon the balls to a certain location. I would say I don't doubt Kami could do the same, and perhaps Dende too, but I do think it is impressive that Neva could do it with Dragon Balls he did not have a hand in creating. And then the episode ends when Goma makes his first wish, turning all of the Earthlings who fought against Boo and their friends into children. First graders, specifically. And the children like Goten and Trunks are turned into babies. And the episode is left on a cliffhanger for the next two wishes on episode two. Now, it's fairly strange that Shenron is able to change Goku and his friends into children, since he can't really affect beings that are far stronger than him in certain ways because of the power disparity. But I, I also suppose that if he can give King Piccolo etern- uh, or eternal youth and King Piccolo was stronger than Shenron, then I suppose this also works. Then again, Kami was apparently stronger than King Piccolo, even as a youth, because Kid Goku, who beat King Piccolo, was swatted away by Kami. It's very strange. Um, Anyway, uh, now we do get some mention of what's called the Evil Third Eye, which is apparently a legendary Tertian Oculus, or magic item or magic item in the shape of an eye, that holds immense power, or magic item that acts like an eye, hard to say. Really difficult to say what that is, but if we look at Eastern philosophy, the third eye tends to showcase enlightenment. In fact, that was one of Tien's proposed origins of his own third eye, and it's the one I prefer over him not being fully human. However, the third eye in more Western philosophy and myth is that it's a sign of the occult and potential devil worship, essentially being tainted by dark magic and both learning knowledge and gaining power one is never meant to have. So it's very easy to think that Toriyama is pulling from that, since he's often taken inspiration from both Western media and ideas just as much as Eastern. But that's all I have to say about Daima's first episode. All in all, it's a pretty good start. Very fan y with some interesting new characters. And while it either retcons or shoves aside some lore, and the fandom is taking things too literally, often. I do think it was pretty enjoyable. I look forward to episode two. I hope this breakdown was helpful to everyone. I can't promise I can give reviews on every episode, as I am quite busy, but still, it's always cool to give my thoughts and information. Now, I have a loose goal on Patreon to reach 100 members by the end of the year, and currently we are at eight. If you'd like to join, it's just two and a half bucks, and it would mean the world to me. But if not, I never want to pressure anyone. Please like and share if you think I deserve it, and your comments are always great to read, and I always, of course, appreciate your likes as well. See you, everyone.